page 286. 287. You're so alone without the other guitar players. You're doing fine.
conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That verse right there, that part of that verse right there, has God has touched me so many times when, you know, you can't walk this walk without once in a while getting discouraged. Now we shouldn't. We just sang the song saying we should never be discouraged. The, the truth is, is I believe that. But sometimes, sometimes what we believe and how we're working through some things, they, they don't seem to add up. They don't seem to balance anymore. And I've had the Lord speak to me many times when I thought, when I thought nobody cared and nobody understood and nobody wanted to help. I've had this scripture come to me. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And it brings us a confident hope. Uh, I've been studying a, a lot lately uh, along the early lines of Pentecost in America. And I've been looking at some of the heroes. I, and heroes is my uh, The men and women that step forward and against all kinds of oppression and all kinds of misunderstanding and who knows how much hatred they continue to press on and they continue to spread the, the <clears throat> Pentecostal full gospel holiness message they all, use, they, they all use those terms in different ways and at different times but they all meant the same thing uh, the the Hebrew people that are being written to and, 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 and the recipients of this letter, they, they were in a, in, a, in a social situation where most of the existence in where they lived, most of the culture where they lived, was all built around commerce. It was all built around trade and swapping and selling and things of that nature. And we all know that historically the Jewish faith People of the Jewish faith have been well known for their uh, activities in finances, their activities in, in, in commerce and uh, shipping and things of that nature. But uh, as Paul is pastorally ministering to them, he said, Oh, oh I, want you, I want you to understand, be content with what you have. Don't let covetousness get in your way. And I don't know if you've ever struggled with wanting something and, and just desiring it so much and trying to work hard to gain it. Uh, I, I, can, I, I can look back and I can think of all the extra jobs I did and all the extra work I did so that I could have a little bit more, a little bit different, a little bit something else. And now I'm trying to figure out more than anything else, who am I going to give this to? <laughs> How am I going to get rid of this stuff? Because it meant so much to me and I worked so hard to get it, but now it's just sitting around in the shop and it's not being used. I have, I have literally taken pickup truck loads of stuff to my grandkids so that they could have yard tools and things like that. And I still, I, I don't know if I'm going to live long enough to get rid of all that stuff. And it's, but it's all good stuff. Now, uh, he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Verse 6. So that we may boldly say, we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Mm. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith followed considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And he made it very clear that he considered himself to be the chiefest of all sinners. But you think of where he came from and where God brought him to and how he was a completely different person, but he never, ever seemed to let that go to his head. You know, when God gives somebody a responsibility, 
And, and I think about this. Jesus met with Paul on the road to Damascus, face to face. And he changed the course of his life. And if ever, if ever there was a person who had, I mean, the opportunity at least, to say, hey, I've seen Jesus face to face. I'm not here telling you those things because uh, I've invented some new doctrine. I've, uh, I've invented some new... I, I, I got it from the man himself. But Paul never took that course. Even when he talked about all that he'd been through, he talked about it in a way that it would give glory to God. That it, that, and he even said, you know, that the suffering of this present world just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Uh, one of the one of the early obstacles in American Pentecostalism was that there was a, a very and, and I can only use the word that I understand. So maybe if you don't understand the way I say it, we can talk about it a little more. But there was a very judgmental attitude toward people that if they didn't get their prayers answered, the other people in the church kind of looked down on them. There's something wrong with you. What, 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 what you? And, and, it's, it, it, and we shouldn't criticize them too much because it's the same theory that they came against Job with. Job, there must be something wrong with you or this wouldn't be happening to you. But then you go back and you look at, at, at Paul's life It sounds like a shotgun. It sure does. Right. It's been going on for a while. Yeah. That... Well, I haven't heard anything hit the building yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to think about it from Paul's point of view for just a second. Look at the immense responsibility that God placed on his life to do what he did and teach what he taught. And, and then for him to say, you know, remember those that have rule over you. Now, he used the word rule. <coughs> Why do you think he used, do any of your other, other Bibles have a different word there? Mine says leaders. Yeah, leaders. Uh, the word rule to, to, to the day and time that Paul was speaking to was not in any way a negative idea. Because the people in those days, from especially those with a Hebrew background, you always looked up to your elders. And, the, and th there was no such thing as a household that was just mom and dad and kids. Because it was generation by generation. Sometimes your household would have multiple generations in it. And, and the one that had rule was the person that God chose to be your leader, your teacher, your uh, director, your guide, whatever word you want to put in there. And see, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't see this as a negative thing. My Bible says, leaders who spoke, who spoke the word of God to you. Yeah. Yeah. All of these people, the Hebrew church, was... Have been those people have been led to the Lord by someone. That's right. And they needed to not forget those people. And 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 structurally, structurally, they they needed to understand how God had designed the church to work. Yes. And uh, you know, if if Christianity was brand new to all of us, we'd have a lot to learn. Yes. We'd have a lot to learn. I'm glad that when I came into Christianity. I had generations of people that were before me that had paved the road to show me and teach me, and they were very experienced. And if it, if it hadn't been for those people and their and their uh, rule over my life, I might have gone straight from the you know from the earliest days. But they were there, and they loved me, and they cared about me, and they taught me the things that that should be taught. Uh, and they said, "But here's the thing: if you're going to follow those people." Remember 
where their teaching or their rule or their leadership ends up. How are they living it? And then he's reminded, and says, Jesus is always the same. Always the same. Uh, I've heard a few people come along and and, and uh, in this kind of criticizing and judgmental mode and say, well, we shouldn't we should ever be uh, depressed or we should ever be afraid or we should never have and, and the reason we shouldn't is because if we have Jesus living on our heart he's the same yesterday, today, and forever well that is true about Jesus that's true about God, that's true about the Holy Spirit but brother and sister, just like any living human being, we have to grow and learn as we go. We don't come from the factory with everything installed that we're going to need to know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, 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 I've been looking back and looking back at, at uh, you know, sometimes the family just don't turn out the way you want the family to turn out. Yeah. And, and I've, been, I've been looking back and saying, well, maybe if I approach this this at this time. But see, the trouble is, is when I'm looking back, I'm looking back with today's judgment and today's maturity and today's knowledge. And I didn't have it back then. And uh, so maybe what we look back on and we call mistakes weren't really mistakes at all. They were just the learning curve. They were just that developmental stage that we're going through. And, uh, and that's possible. So, now, let's jump from the flame into the fire. Or from the, fire pan, from the frying pan into the fire. Let's say it that way. Let's turn to James chapter 1. This is week 52. We have been teaching on faith for a whole year. And we haven't missed but a couple of Wednesday nights in there. Well, that's all right. I think by the time, maybe, maybe by the time we finish up what we have left, we'll be right under that in actual class time, 52 times. James chapter 1, verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Lord, I want you to tell me what to do right now. <laughs> and it's, uh, isn't that common really to us as we, as we go along? When we're looking at, 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 our faith, doesn't this at least insinuate it and, and tell us that sometimes your faith is going to be tested and tried? Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, have you ever had someone make you a promise and then they didn't fulfill that promise? We sure have. And sometimes we have opportunity uh, afterwards to, uh, well, sometimes we get in a situation where we have to trust them again. Uh, the way we handle that is kind of, it's kind of a, it's kind of a study in itself. Um, uh, James starts off this book he says a servant of God the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greetings my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations when you fall into temptation oh Knowing that the trying of your faith work with patience. 
But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Uh, and then he goes on and says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth all men liberty, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind that is tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord.
Yep, I like doubting Thomas. I honestly don't worry about whether the, the sun is going to come up every morning or not. I really don't. And I, you know, there's just so many things in life that we, and I'm not talking about taking them for granted. I'm talking about trusting my God to do what He said He would do. Come on now. But then there are other things, and, and I always go back to that story in Matthew, uh, in the Little Girl Commentary. The woman went to a revival service. She had this big quarter on her neck, and she prayed for healing. But she was healed. She believed she was healed. But the evidence wasn't there. It was not until the third year that she went to another revival service because nobody believed her when she said, I'm healed. Nobody believed her. Because they couldn't see the evidence. That's and it. she prayed again and she said, Lord, show the evidence so others will believe that you have done performed mm -hmm. this miracle. And he did. He fulfilled her request. But she never she never never varied from her faith. She knew that God had healed her. That's the kind of faith I want. Yes, speak, speaking speaking our words of faith. And 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 just going forward, it's done. It's done. Go forth and fire my mind. Amen. Go forth and, and just get it done. And so, uh, this this uh, opportunity for uh, for God to speak to us through James. And remember, he sent this out to the 12 tribes. Have you, uh, have you ever wondered why uh, a Christian man, Christian writer, was sending out these letters to the 12 tribes of Israel instead of sending them out to a certain church, certain church, certain church? He was trying to reach the people from his own background, his own heritage, his own nation. He was trying to show them the difference between the, the old covenant and the new covenant. Before Abraham had a covenant agreement with God Almighty, Abraham had faith. It was his faith that made him stand out to God righteously. Honorably, holy. Therefore, God, the creator of the universe, said, This is a man I'm willing to have a covenant with. He was saying, I trust this man, and this man trusts me. And this covenant is not me up here making the rules and the man down here accepting the rules. The covenant is the union of these two and becoming one. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful Paul. Now let's go to James chapter 2. Verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man with vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and saith unto him, Sit thou here in the good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become, become judges of evil thoughts? The good ones, I have, I have a lot of their music. I play it in the morning when I'm, re when I'm reading, kind of turn it way down. And uh, that, that song there is Poor Rich Man. It all, I, I, I play that quite often. You know, we usually judge a man by the clothes he wears, by the car he's riding. You know, that things don't change. From the time James wrote this to now, it's the same. And, and God said, look, 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 look. Our faith makes us different. We don't think like the world. We don't talk 
talk like the world and we don't act like the world. And you and I all know that's our real battle. It took me forever to be comfortable being Bill Sanders. I wanted to be like Jimmy Swagger. I wanted to be like uh, Billy Graham. I wanted to be like Billy Sunday. I wanted to be like, you know, so I, I wanted to be like the, the great name people that were up in the front and, 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 and had something to say and people were willing to listen. God didn't call me to be one of those people. He called me to be me. It took me forever to realize that me and Jesus is enough. Just, just, just me and Jesus. Just be who you are. He, he, he didn't call me to be anybody but me. Now, part of the problem was back in those days, I didn't like me very much. I was too wishy-washy. Sister Nancy could probably tell you lots of stories, but. I, no, she doesn't. And, 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 and we'll, 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 we'll be good to the time tonight and not, not go down that road any farther. Uh, this scripture is telling us how we think about other people. Become judges of evil thoughts. Every time we look at somebody, we automatically in our brain put them in a category somewhere. We the Bible says make judgment based on evil motives. Yeah, and, and see it's an inner it's an inner thing for us. It's nothing about them to start with. It's about us. Do you know what? It doesn't make a bit of difference in eternity. If I say you're saved, or I say you're lost. No difference. But when I look at somebody and I say, oh, that person, oh, they're obviously this or obviously that. Why am I doing that? Well, most of the time it's because of my own insecurities. Because one of the tricks that we, that we pull on ourselves is we try to make ourselves feel good about ourselves. And one of the ways we do that, well, I'm better than that, I'm better than that, I'm better than that, I'm going to be doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. And we do that with money, we do that with... What about that, I remember it used to happen in this church all the time, people would say, well, I can do that because so-and-so does that. Well, if God told you not to do it, it doesn't matter what so-and-so is doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. What matters is what you, you, you are, you're supposed to do. Yeah, I, I, I've had that conversation so many times and, you know, uh, I finally learned, look, you do what God tells you to do because you don't answer to me. You answer to God. But let me warn you, the Bible says this, this, and this about it, so don't think that God hasn't already given you his opinion about it. So I'm not always real popular when I talk like that, but still... You know, it's that way. I I, 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 I was very comforted, you know, when we went uh, a couple of weeks ago, we went to a, uh, visit a church, you know, in Joshua, where they were celebrating their 50 year anniversary. And uh, the couple that started that church, uh, their, their, their children that are now pastoring and leading that church and, and making everything the way that it should be, uh, to keep their, to keep their ministry alive and the church is just thriving. They were just little kids, like younger than these babies. Well, you know, they were just babies. But their mom and dad made great investment into me. And while I was sitting there and talking to different ones came by, uh, one, 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 one gentleman come by and, and I, I introduced myself. He said, oh, I know, I know you. I said, well, I, where did we meet? He said, well, no, no. He said, I don't think we've ever met. But he said, I've watched your YouTube <laughs> preaching. And, he, and, the, and it blessed my heart to know that just being who I am and doing what God tells me to do is all that matters. It's all that matters. Uh, in verse 5 of that same, it says, Hearken, my beloved brethren, 
Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? Oh, think about that. You know, I see those, I see those missionaries. There's, there's a couple of really big revivals going on. Uh, there was a, uh, I got an email this, it was either this morning or yesterday, and one of, one of our groups is, uh, I, I can't remember what country they're in right now, I just won't come to my mind, but the Assemblies of God in that nation are planning to plant and start 1,000 new churches in 2024. 2024. And uh, and it's it's you think it's going to more than double the number of assembly God churches in that nation. And what what they're working on right now is getting all the pastors trained and all the workers trained. They have 500 and something pastors that are just right near graduation where they can go out and these are just basic Bible schools and basic training, but it's going to be enough to, and, and, and it thrills me. You see the picture of their meetings, and these people are crowded under an a, 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 a arbor, brush arbor, and there's no benches, there's no seats, there's no nothing. They're standing and they're just, and, and they're pressed in so close that it, if one of them starts dancing in the spirit, they all have to around them. I mean, it's, <laughs> there's no choice. And, uh, and it thrills me to you know they're hearing something fresh and new, and they're seeing it lived out by the ones that are sharing. And you know, and I know that you know sometimes these are the poorest people financially. They live on little or nothing, but it doesn't stop them. To, yeah, they yeah, had to walk miles and miles, and and and, and, and some of these, but. We, we have some missionaries coming here pretty soon that are going to fill us in on some of this stuff firsthand, not just brother Bill's reminding you. Uh, in the 14th verse of that same chapter, what does it profit, my brother, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Wow. Earlier in that verse, in that book, James was talking about how that if you break one rule in the law, you're guilty of all. You're guilty of all. And, and he's, he's saying, look, all of these things are here, but... In verse 12 he says, So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. We've been set free from our sin. And we're living in the land of liberty. And I'm not talking about America. <laughs> I'm talking about my soul. I, I am... I am an heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And there is already a provision for me in eternity to be one with God. That's thrilling. That's thrilling. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what profit, what doth it profit? The, the willingness to put your faith to works starts in your own attitude. I've seen a lot of people that I personally fought 
Why don't they go to work and earn what they need? Why, why, why are they just sitting around waiting for somebody else to give them everything? And folks, it's not always that simple. It's never that simple. I, I just, uh, I, I, I have just been blessed by a multitude of skills and I could work hard and I had the strength to work hard and that helped, helped me to prosper in a lot of ways. But I didn't, I, I didn't always understand why every other kid on my street couldn't get him a lawn more and go mow grass. You know, sitting around whining because he didn't have candy or sitting around whining because he didn't have a bicycle or whatever, you know, or stealing mine. Well, why didn't they do it? Well, I don't know. It's too complicated. But God's telling us here through the book of James, uh, and I, I, th I think we want to get into this again next week because we've run out of time, believe it or not. And... Uh, I'd like to I'd like to cover this a little bit a little bit more thoroughly. When we think of works, sometimes in America, and and, and, and I hate to say this, sometimes in Pentecostal circles, we we don't really put enough emphasis on what on works and the benefit to ourselves. The benefit to ourselves. I I. I adopted a policy decades ago now. When I'm up in Fort Worth or I'm over in Phoenix or I'm somewhere and I'm driving around and you come up to the corner and there's somebody standing there holding a sign. Very common these days. Used to be, I just ignored them. Tried not to look at them. Because in my mind I thought, you know, why don't you go get a job? Why don't, why, don't, why don't you do something about it? And I have actually seen, and I've actually had the experience. We'll work for food on the side. But when you stop and say, hey, man, I, got some, I got some ditches I need dug right across there. I've never had one of them get in the truck go with me. Not one. But I decided a long time ago that I should approach them as the Good Samaritan approached that poor, wounded person that was laying down beside the road. And I, as, as soon as I see somebody, the first thing I do is, Lord, should I help? Lord, do you want me to do something? And I can take sometimes the Lord says yes, and sometimes the Lord says no. But that's how I do it. And so we'll talk about that a little bit more next week. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being online. I'm using my laptop right now, so I can't see who's on and off, off on with us like I could with my with my other tablet. So uh, thank you for being here tonight. God bless you. We'll see you here on Sunday.